The internet has undergone a strange transformation in recent years, which you may have noticed. And no, I don't mean Belle Delphine selling you a jar of piss for a thousand pound. I mean the complete Orwellian takeover of free speech. Gone are the days when the internet was a wild west of different ideas and viewpoints, i.e. an actual diverse environment. It's now become little more than an extension of the mainstream media. You can see this by a simple YouTube search. Search any political subject and the first dozen pages of results will be nothing but BBC, CNN, late night talk shows and all the rest. Actual independent sources get buried by the algorithm or simply deleted off the platform altogether. Google is much the same, blocking or burying sites it doesn't like under the false pretense of protecting users from hate speech. Oh hate speech, please protect me from ideas because I'm too stupid to think for myself. Big tech has slowly begun silencing anyone who isn't on board with the woke agenda. Dare think for yourself and you'll soon find yourself cancelled. Game videos, cat videos, anti-Trump videos is all good. Everyone else, watch out. But what's actually going on here? Are all victims of this purge really the hateful bigots we're told? The answer is of course no. Before we explain why, let's take a moment to remember all the writers, thinkers, philosophers, journalists and academics who've been silenced in the name of diversity. Alex Jones, David Icke, Milo Ianopoulos, David Wolfe, Red Ice Radio, Stefan Molyneux, David Duke, Roosh Fee, and a number of other truther channels, MGTOW channels, pro-Trump channels, anti-vaxxers and Covid sceptics. These were not hateful people, but some of the most thought-provoking channels on the platform. Their crime was simply daring to question the mainstream narrative. You see, back when the internet was first growing, the elites didn't foresee how the free and open exchange of information could take away their power to write the history books. It allowed ordinary people on a laptop to influence massive numbers of people. Big Tech soon realised that when you have an even playing field, when you don't engage in any kind of censorship or bias and allow people to think and speak freely, then it will always create a right-wing conservative, anti-woke, anti-politically correct environment. Every time. And they do not like that. They don't want you thinking for yourself, and they very cleverly branded those who engage in critical thinking as peddlers of hate speech, fake news or any other weaponised word. The internet let the genie out of the bottle when it came to unplugging people from the mainstream media. And the censorship we're now seeing is simply the establishment trying to rein people back under its influence. It's not about stopping hate speech, folks. They're trying to stop the awakening of human consciousness that inevitably arises with the free, unfiltered, uncontrolled exchange of ideas. The internet allowed ordinary people to start writing the history books and they do not want that. In his book, The Liberal Media Industrial Complex, Mark Dice writes, The 2016 election proved that the balance of power had shifted from the tight-knit mainstream media to the hands of everyday people using Facebook, Twitter and YouTube to spread their message. In order to regain control, the media began working with Silicon Valley to rewrite the algorithm so these big tech platforms would favour their content above that posted by ordinary people. It's an understatement to say that what's happening is a conspiracy between big tech and the mainstream media, which are working together to give traditional outlets the loudest voice. In other words, they're trying to put the genie back into the bottle. We often think of the culture war as being a conflict between the left and right, or on a deeper level the conflict between the masculine and feminine. But what it truly represents is the conflict between those who are free of the mainstream media's influence and those who are still plugged into it. And this is where we are folks, World War 3 is an information war and it's one the cult is losing, because censorship and silencing is all they have left. Okay guys, if you haven't done so, please pick up a copy of my book, The NoFap Success System, which is now available on Kindle or paperback, which discusses the crisis of masculinity facing the West and what to do about it. It's a summary of all my health material and would greatly help support the channel, so please check it out if you haven't already. Otherwise, thanks for watching.